Hello, CypherCon. How's everybody doing tonight? I just want to say I'm so excited to be here. It's been such a fun day. This is my, my first time ever at CypherCon, so uh, thank you all for such a great day of sharing knowledge and solving puzzles and doing lots of cool stuff. Um, this is such an incredible community, and I'm uh, honestly honored to be a part of it. Um, so uh, give it up for yourselves for being here and for uh, everything that you, you do. And I also just want to thank all of the people who work so hard and tirelessly to put on an incredible event like this uh, every year. And um, yeah, so um, first of all, uh, my name is Amy. Um, I'm a Milwaukee-based audio engineer, musician, and uh, now I'm currently a tech apprentice at uh, Concurrency. Um, and I like to make things, um, especially music. And today we are going to talk about one of the most exciting music making tools I've ever come across. It is a coding platform called Sonic Pi. Um, tonight we're gonna explore the use of the Sonic Pi live coding environment as a means of using code to create music, as well as uh, to provide an accessible gateway into more complex coding environments for, for people who might not have a background in coding or programming or anything like that. Um, we'll also talk a little bit about the community that's growing around Sonic Pi um, and how much creative potential exists there. And I, I, I venture to guess that a lot of people in this room and a lot of people that have been uh, in, involved in CypherCon would really um, also get excited about, about this community. Um, so like I said, um, I like making things. And because I like making things, um, I am drawn to all things DIY. Um, that's, you know, DIY as in do it yourself. Uh, the process, the mentality, and the community. Um, <clears throat> so DIY is a lot of things. To me, it's both a daily, practice and a framework uh, for exploring the world. But DIY is also a music scene that uses social media and grassroots organizing to put on tours and shows all around the world, spanning pr a probably infinite amount of genres. Um, DIY is a community as well. Uh, it's a global community of artists, musicians, audio engineers, booking agents, promoters, small business owners, um, visual artists, craftspeople, filmmakers, anybody creative basically um, that would rather take matters into their own hands than rely solely on um, the systems that society provides for connection and artistic expression. Um, DIY also includes makers. Um, I think uh, a lot of people here are, would consider themselves to be makers who experiment with making, uh, making things using new technology or finding new applications for technology that's already there. Um, and I do consider myself to be a maker. Um, I make music in local bands. Um, I also make music as a uh, producer and audio engineer doing recording and mixing and um, from from different local and regional and national acts um, and I also I also make community through um, through my uh, involvement in putting on shows in the local music scene as well as kind of in the, the Midwest region um, and I, I love to contribute to community via uh, workshops with, about where I can share my, uh, my knowledge and my passion with other people. Um, so, and lastly, lastly, I make technology solutions too by day. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so today um, I want to talk about Sonic Pi as a fun way to make music. Um, and, and it, like I mentioned earlier, an accessible gateway to learn coding. Um, there's lots of, uh, it's a great way, and it was a great way for me personally to learn the basics of, of different object-oriented programming principles and logic. Um, and uh, like I said, the community is really exciting. So uh, basically, my goal today is whether you're a master programmer or who's never even hummed an original tune, 
or um, a brilliant musician who can barely even log into Facebook to promote your next show, that you leave this session confident that you have all the knowledge that you need to make your very own music using Sonic Pi. Um, so, live coded music takes a lot of shapes and forms, um, but before we kind of get into the nitty gritty of it, I want to show you a clip of a really cool live coded performance um, by uh, uh, somebody named MXS uh, that they, um, uh, do we have any Daft Punk fans in the room? Yes, right on. Yeah, so this is a code cover of Aerodynamics by, uh, by Daft Punk. I won't play the whole thing, but I will play a little bit of it and here we go. And I won't talk through the whole thing, but this is a great chance to take a look at what the actual IDE looks like. different components as indicated in uh, the, the parameters that they're specifying in the code here. idea of uh, kind of you, you can really maximize the sounds that you're making with this program um, you can strip it back and just have one one melodic layer going on there's lots of different things uh, that, that you can do um, so but first uh, before I show you how to actually set up uh, writing songs in Sonic Pi um, let's talk just a little bit about what exactly it is and how it works uh, and where it came from um, so First of all, uh, it's super easy to get uh, started and set up. Um, so before I kind of get into this all, uh, we'll, we'll, as far as making music with Sonic Pi goes, um, I'll show you how easy it is to get started. We'll go over some of the basic music concepts that are helpful to understand going into it. Um, We'll talk about just the, the basic computing requirements and then we'll make some noise. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll do the basics and then get into some of the fun stuff like looping and, and thread syncing. Um, yeah, so it's a free download from sonicpi.net. Um, all you need is a laptop that can run it uh, or a computer that can run it. Uh, it runs on Mac, Windows, Linux, Raspberry Pi. Um, and all you need is something to type the code and, and an audio out, which is a pretty big departure from, you know, I, I, if, if anyone has ever seen like a full DJ setup with, with turntables or, or whatever kind of controller they're using. All I brought today was a, a laptop case and it was, it was awesome. I've carried a lot of amps up a lot of scary stairs that, you know, people shouldn't be carrying heavy things up and down. Uh, so <laughs> I like this load in and load out a lot better. Um, but yeah, so 
Let's just talk about some of the music concepts that are helpful. Um, the way that playing notes works, uh, you can play notes two different ways. Um, you can either use note numbers, so that's just based on which number key on a keyboard it would be. Um, or you can specify note names like C, C, D, E, whatever, um, and the octave that you're playing them in. Um, chords and scales. Uh, are very fun to play with, very cool to play with. You can do lots of different things iterating through the, the scales um, depending on how you want to sequence your notes. Um, and you can play chords. Uh, and chords are essentially just groupings of notes that are in the same key that uh, play the, uh, the, the... We don't need to get too into music theory here, but it's usually the, the first, third, and fifth of, of, the, of the scale and the key that you're in. And then um, kind of understanding BPM, so tempo, how fast, how slow your song is gonna be is really helpful. Uh, something that I love to do when I'm writing in, in Sonic Pi is I'll write a whole song in one, uh, one time signature, or not time signature, but one tempo, and then I'll either speed it way up or slow it way down just to see what it sounds like. And, and sometimes, uh, you know, you end up writing two songs at once that way. <laughs> Um, so let's get into making some noise. Um, I will do my best to do this with one hand. Um, so when you want to play some notes, all you do is type the word play and then which note you want to play and then you run it. That's one note. All I did was, you know, say play 70. You can also, like I said, specify the note name with a letter. Like that. Um, when you run two notes at the same time, we'll just play both notes that I just played. They're played at the same time, so you need to set the time between notes if you want to play a sequence of notes, and that is just setting a sleep parameter. So it pauses the program essentially for however much time you tell it to. Um, I have it set for one, which is just one second. And there you go, that's how to play simple notes. Um, so, Playing chords is just as easy. Um, so a, a theme that you'll see here is that if if you have a background in coding, the coding part is the easy part. Um, and that's kind of the whole point, is that this is such a great gateway into learning uh, harder coding things. So um, to play a chord, you just call it like you would call a method. Um, chord and then specify which root of the which root note you want the chord to be so here it's e3 so that's in the third octave on the the keyboard or whatever um and in this particular case it's going to be a minor seventh chord so we're going to get a little jazzy um but if you want to play a chord where the notes are separated so an arpeggiated chord uh you can do that by just saying play pattern chord And there you go. So that's chords for you. Um, that's, uh, as far as songwriting goes, those are really good um, kind of tenets of building a rhythm section. That's, you can use it for like, kind of like, I think of things in terms of like uh, analog bands. So I, I use chords a lot for like rhythm guitar sections. I mean, it's not a rhythm guitar, it's a synthesizer sound making the sound, but it kind of translates in the same way. Um, like I said, you can also play scales. Uh, in this case, it's gonna start on C. It's gonna be a major chord. It will span five octaves. This is the sleep time, so this was the space between the notes. And the release time is set very low. So these are just the parameters that define how it's gonna sound. Um, the release being so low, this is going to be a very staccato sounding scale, so here you go. Yeah. 
<laughs> so you can change uh, so many different parameters um, of pretty much anything, just like in any coding language. Uh, but um, one of the main things that's fun to play with is the release time. So that's just the, the, the length of the note that you're playing. Um, we just heard a super short release time. Let's get a longer one. We'll just hold it out for four seconds like that. So those are the basics, the very basics of playing notes. Um, you can also, uh, there are a ton of samples that have been actually loaded into the program that you can call on from a library that's stored in, um, in the program. Um, and that's where you get um, a, like the beat making functionality. So I'll just show you, uh, this is just a sample of a basic um, backbeat. I'm gonna use a different bass sound, bass drum sound. So here is a bass drum that I am using. So you basically just say sample and then it'll give you a list of all the different samples that you can choose from, which is very helpful. And here you go. So obviously, just playing it like that is cool, but you can't really do much with it, uh, which is where some of the more interesting things uh, in, in how to use the code come into play. Um, so the first thing that I think is kind of a, a function, uh, that's capital F-U-N, fun, uh, <laughs> is <laughs> looping. That's kind of the core of all of the live coding elements. Um, you can use these looping functions to build on each other um, and create lots of different layers of sound. As you heard in the Daft Punk song, uh, they were using the live looping function that's set up slightly different from just a normal loop. A loop will just play through and through and through. You can't really tie it to anything else. We'll talk a little bit about the, the syncing that you can do with live looping uh, in a little bit, but this is just a normal loop that you can run through and play with it however you want to. I will also say that uh, as a, I, I play uh, other instruments too, it's, it, but I don't play drums, so it's really fun to be able to just throw together a really quick beat to just play along to. Um, yeah. So that's uh, how to loop samples. You can loop anything though, you can loop notes. Um, I'm gonna loop the same scale that I played just a few minutes ago. And I'll just go on and on and on forever until the program crashes. Um, yeah, so Sonic Pi has a ton of really cool synth voicings built into it. Um, I think that is, it's some of the, the most interesting stuff that you can play with on here. I mean, I am the kind of person that I'll sit in front of a keyboard and just play every single sound to the point where I'm like, oh, I could have played piano, but I was just listening to the sounds it can make. Um, so I'll just show you a few different uh, voicings that, that, that you can play with. Uh, we'll start with Blade, which is one of my favorite ones. There's a lot of cool kind of like um, vintage sounding uh, like vintage sounding um, synth sounds that you can play with. Um, yeah, so there's lots of different specifics that you can play with, but the core of all of this, uh, for me at least, is how much of a springboard into other types of coding this program is. Um, I started using this program about three years ago not long before I met Michael uh, when, and when he asked me to, to give this presentation. And I had no previous coding experience at all. Um, my background was in audiovisual stuff. Um, and, uh, but I was kind of at a point in my life where I wanted to kind of turn into a, a more of a programming uh, path, but I didn't know how. And it was really hard to kind of learn just the basics and the fundamentals um, without having the background of, okay, like how does basic logic work? You know, stuff like that. And so, since I, you know, had this background in music, I understood how to 
put together drum loops and, and build songs in the way that you build songs in this program. Um, and having that background kind of helped me understand the, the coding concepts more so. So some of the cool things in here that like, it would have probably taken me months longer to understand as I was learning, you know, Java and, and Python and stuff like that. Um, I, being able to hear immediately what was going on in like iterations and like using conditionals and defining functions and using variables and um, kind of figuring out how, how that actually applies, um, that's, what, that's where the value really lies in this program for me. Um, I, we only have a couple of minutes left here, so I, I don't want to get too into uh, the, the, the code demonstration, but I will take a look. I think that one of the, the examples that I have kind of um, kills a few birds with one stone. Uh, I mentioned that the, the thread syncing is a really cool function. Um, let's see. This doesn't have thread. Okay. Um, yeah, we, we'll use this one. So this code sample uses thread syncing. Um, basically, you set up a live loop. This is the the core, like the, the Forgot to comment out the last one, sorry. All right. So we'll, we'll just build this up and I'll kind of explain what I'm doing as I'm doing it for, for time's sake. So this is the backbeat. I usually start with a backbeat just because it's easy to think everything else to it. Um, I already showed you a loop like this. So this next loop, when I run it, um, since it's synced, uh, as indicated in that uh, line 221, um, the timing will match up uh, rather than just going on top of it in the way that a, a normal loop would. Now the next loop that I'm gonna in here also uses some effects. There are a ton of really cool effects that you can play with in here. Um, you can use like reverb and delays and there's a really cool bit crusher function that makes everything sound like an 8-bit song that I, I like to play with. Um, this, this next loop uses a pan slicer which is kind of cool so uh, if, if this is run stereo you'll hear it going back and forth. live loop down here that I'm about to add in when I run it again actually uses some variables. Um, it uses some logic. It, it, it chooses notes from this collection. That's the kind of melodic line going on there. is it for the, the code demonstration. Um, but to, to kind of just tie things up here, um, I guess if any of this sounds interesting to you, please uh, check it out, download it, make some noise. You'll be, if you know how to code, you'll be making music in five minutes and it's it's really cool. Um, like I mentioned, there's, there's a really big online community um, for, for this program. Uh, they're, it's, it's all over the place. It's, it's on Twitch. It's, they, they do a lot of uh, live streams on Twitch and YouTube. Um, but the, the real core of the online community here is uh, they have a forum uh, at this inthread.sonicpie.net site. And they have so many cool different things. You can share you know, your songs that you've written with other creators. You can hang, up, or hang out and meet up, share thoughts. Uh, as well as communicate with the creator of the program, Sam Aaron, directly for like future requests. And he's, he's super active. I, I don't know him, but he is uh, extremely um, 
active on the online communities and is very responsive to, to feature requests and stuff like that. So that's very cool. And like I said, the program is free. It's very accessible um, and it's a lot of fun. So check it out. And if you do check it out and make some noise, please feel free to share it with me. Um, my name is Amy Up the Grove and it's been a pleasure making music with you guys tonight.